Hey look YouTube, Sidekick here, back in my trusty F86 Sabre for a change. I've uh, been doing a lot of uh, videos on the A4 because of the A4 uh, version 2 final release. Um, but was thinking that maybe I'd like to do some videos on some other airplanes. Took a little poll on YouTube and on my Discord channel and the F86 came out the winner. So we're going to do a few... Uh, a few videos about the F-86, probably going to throw in some about the P-47 as well. Uh, I thought that where I would start would be a video about using rockets, uh, frankly, because it's easier to get good at using rockets with the Sabre than it is to do using bombs, and I still need to practice a little bit before I can make any videos about using bombs. So here we are in the Sabre, and we're getting ready uh, to taxi out and go out to the range and there's just a couple of switches that we need to throw in order to be able to use rockets uh, They're both on the left hand side of the column first We got to change the gun sight to rocket mode then we got to flip this switch here and We need to check if it's up. It's going to be in single mode if it's down it's going to be in multiple or auto mode We just need to decide which ones we're going to use now Normally obviously that's kind of a master safety switch you'd use it when you get out to the range But it's a little bit hard to find in the virtual cockpit So I actually usually take care of it here on the ground and and I'll be honest with you I actually have uh, the single mode at least bound to a switch on my HOTAS uh, So I can access it quickly once we get out there. So I think we're ready to go uh, Saber is pretty easy to set up and uh, now it's just a matter of taxiing out to the runway So while we're on our way out to the runway, let's talk a little bit about the uh, F-86. Um, there's a few things that you need to uh, think about the F-86, particularly if you're going to fly it in uh, air-to-ground mode. Um, the first of these, of course, is the mission that the F-86 was designed for. And, of course, that mission uh, was about as far from air-to-ground as you could possibly get, since it was designed to fly high and fast and intercept Soviet bombers on their way to the United States. It was, uh, of course, adapted to air-to-ground service when uh, the U.S. Air Force rediscovered the need for uh, providing close air support during the Korean War. So um, you have to understand and you, that uh, air-to-ground was kind of tacked on to the F-86 mission after the fact. And you can see that by virtue of the fact that all of the weapons controls are buried down there by your feet. Uh, and they're a little bit haphazard in the way that they are designed. So you can already feel the fact that you're not really using this aircraft in its primary role when you're doing air-to-ground. But be that as it may, it is still possible to use it very effectively in air-to-ground. So we're just getting ready to uh, take off here, just doing final checks to make sure that everything, all the needles are in the right place. We got the flaps down. And we're going to spool up the throttle and release the brakes at around 85 and we're off down the runway. It does take a while to build up speed on the runway. You want to make sure that you get well up past 100, probably in the 120s, even more than that before you try and get it off the ground. And we're up. So the other thing that I would say that you need to uh, bear in mind when you are flying the F-86 is its flight characteristics. And, and you need to understand where it came from. And essentially, you know, the F-86 was designed by people whose experience had been designing high-performance piston-engine fighters particularly during the Second World War. It was designed to do the same kind of job that the P-51 was designed to do by the end of the war, for instance. And so, it, you know, it has a design mentality that is very much like, um, you know, kind of a warbird on steroids. Um, and so there's a few things about the way that it behaves that are important uh, when you get into air-to-ground mode because of that kind of design heritage. Uh, one of those is that it's very fast. Um, of course, speed was one of the primary attributes um, that piston engine fighters always tried to achieve. Uh, and once you gave designers a jet uh, with a lot more thrust than you could get out of a propeller-driven aircraft, 
um, they got pretty serious about building a very fast, very fast airplanes. Uh, at the time, of course, Mach 1 was a limitation that they had to deal with very seriously. Uh, but other than that, they were looking for, for speed, and the Sabre certainly delivered that. So um, it's designed to go pretty fast, and it's designed to get fast pretty quickly. Um, these are things that are not necessarily uh, assets when you are trying to perform uh, the air-to-ground mission, because the aircraft picks up speed speed well in a dive and it tends to like to go at a fairly good clip even at the top of the dive when you're rolling in and if you let it do that it will uh, effectively run away with you um, and get going so fast that it's very difficult to put rounds on target accurately so we do need to manage our speed very carefully especially um, if we're going to do rocket attacks without using the speed brakes which we can do and that's what I'm going to do today um, you have to be very careful about managing the speed at the top of the dive particularly so we're just coming up to the range here and I'm going to uh, pull in here at right angles and we'll probably just do a quick trim run here first of all to get ourselves acclimated to the range. There we go, we can roll in. So of course in a trim run what I'm going to do is put the aircraft in a dive similar to what we would do for an attack and I'm just going to see what kind of trim it's going to take to keep the nose uh, steady. So that looks about right. Yeah, something like that. Alright. So let's pull up and out and get ready to go around. Now uh, if you're really paying attention, you'll notice that I'm going to fly the pattern slightly differently today than I do uh, or have done for a lot of my other videos, and that's because I saw a video on another channel called The Operations Room by uh, Mike Solium, who has been a very loyal viewer of my channel, and he is ex-U.S. Air Force, uh, and so he teaches uh, how to do ground attack the Air Force way. The patterns that I have been using up until now have honestly been drawn from a U.S. Navy publication. But hey, we're flying an Air Force jet, so maybe it's about time we learned how to do some of this stuff more the Air Force way. The Air Force flies a much squarer pattern than the Navy does in uh, on the range, so we're going to try that. Um, with my apologies to Mike, I'm not all that good at it yet, uh, but I'm working on it. So we're going to fly, fly a fairly square corner here, fly parallel to the target before we uh, turn at the top at the base and come in. You'll notice that we're already up to 400 knots, which is probably too fast to roll in. So we are going to have to kill some speed uh, before we roll in. We're going to we're going to try to go fairly far back from the target. Um, not use too steep a dive angle, but give ourselves lots of time to get ourselves lined up. So let me also take a moment here and talk about how we're going to do this. We're not going to do this exactly the way the book, or at least the manual, says to do it. The manual says that uh, once we roll in, uh, we should uncage, mechanically uncage the sight, uh, and then uh, let it actually calculate a range to the target, and then it will give us an accurate uh, release cue if we hold that over the target. Um, I have not really ever been successful doing that. Uh, I find once I uncage the sight, um, it moves around, as my grandmother would have said, like a blue arsed fly. Uh, and even when I do get it to settle over the target, um, I don't find that it's actually that accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the bottom tick mark on the caged site as my release cue, because I've found that's actually pretty good for a rocket attack. Okay, you can see that I've turned base, and now I'm working pretty hard to knock some speed off. i got the throttle almost all the way back. And we're flying a base leg that's about 90 degrees to our eventual attack vector. And just trying to judge the moment to roll in here. So you can, it's a little bit hard to use very much in the way of canopy cues with the Sabre. Uh, partly because you just have so much freedom to move your head around in the cockpit. You kind of just have to get used to looking at the angle. This is a reasonably high angle attack. We're going to roll the lift vector over to the target. We're going to pull up until we get the center of the, the sight, which seems to be a pretty good approximation of the flight path vector. I'm going to try to roll it around onto the target, pass a little ways, get it rolled onto the target, and we're going to level out, and then we're going to pull up and try to get the bottom tick mark 
of the site and we're going to want our release cue is a little bit above that bottom tick mark right around there and then we pull away see how we did all right so that was pretty good uh 13 meters uh, just a little bit beyond the target so we're a little bit late on the pickle uh, so we're just going to go around and give that another try so uh, we're flying a fairly square pattern here so we're as we're pulling up uh, we try and do about a four G pull up, although I'm um, not all that precise in doing that yet. Uh, but the saber will climb very quickly out the other side, so that's what we're doing. Climbing out. We're looking for between eight and 9,000 feet, I think. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm probably going to try and get in a little bit closer on the next run. Uh, so once we figure out where we're about ready for our downwind, which is basically as we're going over the coast, yeah, we're trying to level out at around 8,000 feet, and we've just gone a little bit beyond that, and we're trying to do another 90 degree turn here, almost uh, due south, about 10 degrees off of due south. Now we're going to take a look over on the left, and I use those, uh, we kind of have a a set of green, a set of fields that move back from the target, and I basically pick my roll in um, based on those. So I'm looking at sort of the seam between the second last and last fields. That's kind of the line that I've picked for my roll in line here. And I want to be down at around 8,000 feet, and I want to be down under 300 knots when I get to roll in. So let's see if we can get all of that managed. A little bit high, so we're trying to lose some altitude, but we also need to lose some speed. Just really flying the numbers right now, keeping an eye on the tar target so I don't get uh, too lost in the numbers and go too far. Uh, we're a little bit high, and but at least the speed has come down. Probably being okay. This would be more of a problem when you're bombing. You're going to need to be much more accurate in your dive angle. With rockets, it's not as big a deal. It's part of the reason I started with the rockets. So once we pull a beam the target here, we roll over, hit the top of the cockpit, aimed at the target, and we pull up. And we're looking at the center of the site. Try and get that on the target. Rolled out and straightened up. And then we are going to pull until we get the bottom tick mark coming up to the target and we're just going to hold it there and release. Okay, 25 meters and a little bit long. So again, pickle's just a little bit late. We probably want to uh, put our release cue a little bit higher above that uh, bottom tick mark that I've been using. So once again, we're pulling up approximately a 4G pull up, at least initially. And we go through a 90 degree turn around the lake here. Okay, that was a pretty decent roll-in point, so let's try and get a little bit closer to our uh, 8,000 feet this time and around the same roll-in line. Now, probably in any tactical sense, this is just uh, an approach that is just way too long, probably gives the ground uh, way too much opportunity to see you coming, but on the range, it gives us lots of time to get ourselves set up. And again, I'm, I'm not using speed brakes. Um, just want to see if we can do this without using these speed brakes for rocket attacks. Um, but I think you can see that it would probably be essential to use them if you were doing bombing. You just, you just pick up speed too quickly in the dive, uh, in the Sabre. And once you get going quickly, uh, the target just goes by so fast if you're, uh, if you're diving quickly. So, um, you definitely want to make sure you're, uh, watching your speed at the top of the roll in, um, and you really want to keep it, uh, keep it back, you know, slower than the jet's really comfortable flying. It's not, not mushy or anything, but it, 250 is slow for the Sabre. Okay, so better job of getting 8,000 feet. Speed's still a little high. Throttled back, bringing that back. For that line between those last two fields. A little bit deeper than we were the last time. It's pretty close, though. Rolling out perpendicular to the target. And then we're just picking up the target over the side of the cockpit there. Keeping half an eye on speed and altitude. Trying to get the speed down. Altitude's pretty good. Just watching the speed and the altitude. 
watching the target come in, maybe pull, pull away a little bit here. Speed's under 300, that's good. The altitude's around 8,000, that's good. Just got to pick the roll-in moment here now. Nice easy roll-in. Bring the top of the cockpit to the target. Pull the flight path vector up to the target. Roll around, try not to over-rotate. Hit the flight path vector on the target. Pull a little bit past and wait for the release cue to come up to the target. Eight, and there we go. Okay, that <clears throat> was too short. And you know why it was too short? Because I released way too early. The cardinal sin uh, in rocket attacks is to fire at too long a range. Um, the rockets, these are HVAR rockets, so they're the forerunner of the Zuni. Uh, but they still are, actually, the exact rockets that were used during the Second World War. They are extremely short range. Uh, launching from the, the range to the altitude where I just lost them, way beyond what's their effective maximum range. And so you see they fell uh, way below um, the aiming point they'd be picked, and it was just because we went too early. So uh, we need to pick an aim-off mark, you know, where we where we hold the flight path vector needs to be closer to the target, and we just need to wait longer uh, until we're closer to the target. So let's give that another shot. Looking for about the same uh, roll-in parameters, 8,000 feet, somewhere between 250 and 300 knots. We're coming around here on our downwind. Okay, try and roll out. Try to kill the speed. Still over 350 knots. Yeah, but we're right around 8,000 feet. And over at those fields, pick our roll in line. Try and get turned onto it here. We're just coming up to the turn. Speed's coming down go roll it in so this time make sure we wait even uh, if we have a good solution we need to wait till we really see the whites of their eyes when we're using rockets did a whole series on using rockets called the fine art of rocket science um, that you may want to check if you want to hear more about rocket performance but basically what happens with rockets is that within their range they fly pretty flat so you can use the same um, same release cue so long as you're within their uh, their performance range but as soon as you get outside of that they, they start dropping below that line very quickly and they get harder to aim so really the secret with rockets is to get close to the target all right we're a little bit closer I feel like this time but still not bad good speed and we're gonna roll in ourselves lined up on the target again a little early that time. Correct the aim. Correct the aim. Correct the aim. And try and pick an aim off mark that's a little bit closer and hold it so the release cue comes up a little bit later. Hold on, hold on, fire. Okay, that's more like what we were looking for. So, uh, the trick to all of this is that we really, really, really do need to make sure we hold fire until we are close to the target. Regardless of anything else we're doing, probably that's the most important thing when you're firing rockets, is to make sure you're not firing too early. Okay, uh, so lesson learned and confirmed. Uh, so I think I've had enough of firing single rockets for today. Once I get uh, sorted out here a little bit, I am going to reach down behind the control column and move the rocket mode switch from uh, manual, which is in the up position, to auto, which is in the down position. There, there. So now it should fire the rockets so long as I keep my finger on the pickle button. It gets a little bit confusing because I am using unlimited ammo uh, in these missions, and I find with the rockets sometimes it gets a little bit confused about how much ammo is left, but we certainly will get some multiple rocket shots. So, once again, firing our, or flying our square pattern here, turning roughly south, looking at the fields over there. Let's see, you better check my altitude. How am I doing? Okay, about 8,000 feet. We're a little fast. Got to slow down. Check our roll-in line on the fields over there. 
to be I go a little deeper than we did the last time somewhere around there anyways trying to look for that seam between the last two fields just before the town light green one and the darker green one we're trying to roll in along that line and we are rolling out approximately perpendicular to our target line all right let's take a look over here get up far enough to see the target there it is and we're holding about 8,000 feet. Speed's coming down below 300, down to 250. Let's hold it right there. Hold it right there. Until we can get to the roll in point right about here. And we're coming over. It's easy roll in this time. Top of the cockpit on the target. Pull the center of the sight up to the target as we roll out. Try not to roll out too soon or too late. Get ourselves lined up. Get ourselves lined up. Pull off to just beyond the target there. Now we're going to hold until we get that release cue up to the target. Going to hold. Stay lined up, but going to hold. Keep holding right about there. Okay, how'd we do? Uh, looks like everything went a little long. Okay, I think we just uh, just needed to release a little bit earlier on the release queue. Let's uh, let's pull up and let's go around one more time on the big round target. See if we can uh, get a slightly better grouping that time. It wasn't bad, but I think we can do better than that. It's all just a matter of interpreting where that release queue is. But uh, certainly, I mean, everything there was, I think, within 50 meters, which is, which is pretty good. But I think we can get better with rockets, especially when we're firing them at close range. So we're climbing out to 8,000 feet here. And we're just going to follow our square pattern. Doing it the Air Force way, Mike. Well, trying to do it the Air Force way. <laughs> All right. Coming around onto our downwind. And we're going to try and roll out. Oops, went a little bit too far that time. Try and roll out. Try and keep around 350 at this point. Start, start pulling back on the power. We're at 8,000 feet. That's pretty good. We're looking for a roll in line over on the left. For that roll in line. Yeah, turn it in. Maybe we'll go in a little earlier this time. Go in one field earlier. Get a slightly steeper dive angle this time. See what kind of picture that gives us. Yeah, there's the target. There's the target. We're a little high. Come down a little. Speed's good, though. Come down a little, keep the speed from going up too much. Hold off just a little longer. Yeah, we're a lot closer to the target this time. You can see by where it is on the cockpit there. Okay, rolling over. Pull it up. Roll out. Try not to roll too far. Cells relined up. That's pretty good. Now, pull the pipper just beyond the target. Hold it there. Wait for the release key to come up. Keep waiting. Keep waiting right about there. Yes. I think that was better. We're just a little bit earlier. Yes. Looks like we spread them all the way across the target that time. Okay. Maybe that's enough uh, firing at circles on the ground today. Why don't we actually pick a real target? We'll... Uh, Take one of the buildings in the building area on the range down there. Let's just get ourselves sorted out. Start our square pattern here again. Keep climbing out. Saber certainly will climb. Uh, no problem getting back to altitude with the Saber. If anything, the problem is stopping it from wanting to climb too far. Right, and so we're getting ready to turn under our downwind once we cross the coast. 
the altitude's coming up to 8,000 speeds. Steady at around 350, that's where we want it. Coming around to our downwind here. Oop, don't go too far. Basically use those mountains in the distance as my aiming mark. So, want to roll in maybe a little deeper than our last run anyways, because the white buildings are a little bit closer to the front of the range. So we want to push in a little bit deeper. Like the last field. Some middle of the last field, something like that. So come around here nice and slow. Nice controlled turn. And we're picking up that last field. And rolling out around there. Okay. Why don't we take the white barn at the front of the very front of the area this time? So I got it in sight. Speed's coming down below 300. Altitude's a shade below 8. Can make sure we don't lose any more though. Okay, there's the white barn. Good speed, good altitude. Just gonna wait till we get to the roll in point. Somewhere around there. Okay, roll it in. Pull the top of the cockpit up. Start to roll out. It's kind of a half roll out. It's very clean. Get it back over to the right until we're on the target. A little bit beyond the target. And just hold it there beyond the target. Stand lined up. Hold it beyond the target. Let it get too high. Wait for the cue there. Good. Good shots. All within about 25 meters. That's good. All right. Well, you know what? Before we go today, maybe it'd be nice to actually destroy something for a change. Uh, there's a little vehicle park of M113s beside that building. Uh, HVAR should be able to do a number on them. So maybe we'll go around one more time. Take a shot at the uh, M113s, what do you think? Alright, pulling up. Coming up to our downwind, keep pulling up. We get up to 8,000 feet, 350 knots. When we start the downwind, that's about where we want to be. A little bit slower this time, alright. Getting ready to turn downwind as we cross the coast, there we go. Line up on our aim off mark in the distance. I've been using that mountain all day. All right, roll out when we're lined up. Check our altitude. Good, 8,000. Don't let it come down. Speed 350 so we can chop the power and try to get that, get that slowed down before we actually do the run. Pulling the power back, keeping the nose high, 8,000 feet. Here we start looking for our roll in line. Roll in slowly here. Around, looking for around the same as where we were last time. That seemed to work pretty well. So, right about there. So, of course, the whole point of doing the range exercises like this is so we can be consistent, learn what looks right and then when we get out and actually have to put this into quote unquote practice uh, we have some idea of what works and what doesn't we're just looking for that black smudge to the left of the white building this time a little bit higher than 8,000 speeds pretty good it's coming down all right better roll in this time a bit more definitive there just gotta pull ourselves out we're trying to get a little left. Now I gotta come back a little to the right. Or to the right. There we go. Pull it up beyond the target a little. Hold it right there. Just hold, just hold, just hold, just hold a little bit to the right. And now. There we go. Bullseye. Can't really look at the uh numbers but uh looks like we got at least one two three four and one one three it's not a bad not a bad tally at all so we know hvars can take out m113s one, one anyways well i think that's pretty much going to do it for the runs today might as well do a little bit of a wing over here go back down have a look at what we have wrought 
before we say goodbye to the range. So there was a little bit longer video, uh, kind of a stream of consciousness there as I'm trying to get used to flying the F-86. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm pretty happy with my rocket technique. Uh, maybe we'll do another one. Uh, maybe the next video we'll go out and do that mission that I had originally made for the A-4. We'll actually go look for some real targets, see how we do. Now let's just do a little bit of zoom, do a sort of, a, maybe we'll do a half Cuban 8 here and come back around to the target. So, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little uh, time on the range in the F-86. Uh, I hope you get out there in the Sabre yourself. Remember, it's a warbird on steroids. And you gotta, uh, you gotta manage your speed. And the other, remember the cardinal rule of rocketry. You really, really, really have to wait until you can see the whites of their eyes, for sure. Alright, well this has been uh, an enjoyable half hour on the range for me. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please do like the video and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and let your friends know. For now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.